Okay. So I don't know asa to. Basta I know ito sa Bayawan. Si Baling Manemo Yaya. Asa man siya? At, ang butay. Taga Bayawan ito siya? Our sugar land is right there. Between two valleys. Dennis, when was the last time you were here? One time in 76, 77. I feel nostalgic because seeing those verdant greens before. Looking at it right now, it's very beautiful, but I just cannot wrap my mind around the fact that we once owned this tract of land. I mean, it's 46 hectares is huge. I feel like I missed out. <laughs> We were living lavishly because we were invited by my sister to come to Bayawan so that we will become a chindiro. In a single week, three times perhaps, going out and partying. We used to have a, a group of friends who uh, have a scheduled parties every week in uh, different houses. Simply, if you have money, you have many friends. So this is still 67, so this is still Nasipit. But look at you, Mom. You look like a movie star. So, Hacienda Roca, this is June 12, 1972. On to progress of Hacienda Roca. Hacienda, they name it Hacienda Roca uh, as a combination of the two family names, Rosales Casocot. The sugar industry was still good at that time. It was only a time at 75, 76 that it really went down. Marcos was the one who appointed Benedicto to head the Anastasia industry. Ultimately, he is the one who is to blame because he's come out of responsibility. And ultimately, he is the beneficiary of Benedicto. Remember all the things that Benedicto bought for him? That's why we can connect all the dots. My family had to sell everything. We had to sell our house. We had to sell our car. We had to sell, according to my mom, we had to sell everything down to the pillowcases. I have sold everything except the dining table because the children uh, complain to me that do not sell the dining table because they don't know how to eat the floor. My husband had to go to Davao to look for a job and I was left alone with six children, all boys. So I had to go around the Magiti because I am a beautician. I had to go house to house, a manicure, so that I can have an earning for them. <laughs> Probably in grade five or grade four, I remember waking up in the middle of the night and I remember like just you know like doing that to her arm ma 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 gigutum ko I, i'm very hungry because we haven't eaten the whole day maybe we should just pray to god so that he will send us food tomorrow and what felt miraculous for me was that the very next day Somebody sent us an anonymous bag of groceries. Inside that grocery bag was a sardine. Well, several sardines, but we opened one and uh, she, she made, she fried it, she fried it. And until today, I remember that to be the best meal I have ever had. When I was in grade 5, I was sent to Mindanao so that my auntie could take care of my education and also my feeding perhaps. It was there that I was made to fetch water from across so many blocks and also had to carry on big loads of feeds for the pig. It's, uh, sometimes it's 10 kilos and I was still in grade 5. We live in nine different houses in 10, 12 years and all of those houses basically could be described as very cheap places to rent. 
So this particular building essentially houses the first house we lived in after we transferred from Bayo 1 to Dumaguete in 1980. But not exactly this building. I mean, it's been, so, it's been such a long time. And that particular entrance where you see the Yamaha, that used to be the gate where we could get in and there's a compound inside and a bunch of houses. And my mom used to call that house the dirtiest house we ever lived. This was the site, probably in the corner, in that corner over there, where my mother, with both hands carrying heavy, heavy baskets of peanut butter and bayi bayi for sale. One day, she fell during a rainstorm, landing flat on her forehead, and she, she almost died. But I, ha I am afraid to go home because my children will see my face because of my uh, falling down. I have to, to stay for a long time in Linda's house, Linda Kabawatan, my first office, para ma so that, that my children cannot see my face. Hi, Nang! Ayan kasokot! Ga, we're making a documentary film about my family. So, di ni umiga po yung sa una. So this is the daughter of our old landlord before, the Mongkopas. Mata na yung papa o mama? So he, he still, she still remembers me because we used to live, to live there. That's our, my old bedroom over there. But they separated it na. So that used to be our, our dining room was over there. This used to be our sala. And this used to be our bedroom. And this used to be an extension of the sala, but they also made it into a separate room. This is also the house where I woke up my mother one night and asked her to pray because I was so hungry. It, I feel betrayed. In fact, with the, most of the majority of the Filipino people, I feel betrayed by them because there is some sort of uh, looking another way. Not to see these things really, what's really happened.